but I, I got these books during the last hardcore as gifts in the mail. I'm never going to read them. I haven't even looked at the titles. That one I know is the Quran. I know from the symbols on it, but I'm not going to read it. And so on, I get stuff like this all the time. And it's easier to be a cunt. It's easier not to make a scene. It's easier not to speak up. It's easier to keep your head down. We all know that. And we, some of you are shaking your head, yes. Uh, whether you're shaking your head, I don't need any validation. I know after doing this almost 27 years, you're cunts. I was telling the, uh, the docu-fuck guys here that uh, about some of my regrets, one of which I would never coach again. Never under any fucking circumstances. Even if I got a billion dollars ahead, it's worse than raising kids. And I wouldn't do that again because I don't get any satisfaction I ought to try to get cunts across the goal line. Sally contends I have a sore back because all, uh, just look at the, 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 the Goomba brothers here. Can you imagine, oh my back, <coughs> trying to get them across the goal line, big two tubs of shit. I mean, now the little teeny skinny shits is not so, not so difficult, but it's hard. And I said I wouldn't coach again because I thought wrongfully that everybody had self-esteem like I did. I didn't know it was such a rare motherfucking commodity, such a rare commodity. And um, it's, it's, it's a bitch, it's a bitch. And then, but I, I, as I know, as I, I mentioned during uh, the last hardcore, I get gifts. It's not that I'm not appreciative of kids, but I, I got these books during the last hardcore as gifts in the mail. I'm never gonna read them. I haven't even looked at the titles. That one I know is the Quran. I know from the symbols on it, but I'm not gonna read it. And so on, I get stuff like this all the time. Now, I'm not sure if I get sent these things to ingratiate me towards something, or I'm not sure what the fuck it is, but I certainly give them a lot of them. Now, I've told you before, you are where you are because you're pleasers. Some of you think you're not pleasers, but you're still a pleaser. I have never bought flowers, candy, uh, gifts, anything for anybody in my life. Never. I'm abusive, they tell me. They say I'm a bully. I don't, I don't agree with that, but if you weren't a bully where I came from, you didn't get past the fifth grade. And yet I continue to get gifts. And I ask you, everybody in this room, and I know everybody in this room, how has your program worked out of being a pleaser? Well, if your program had worked out, you wouldn't be here. And if love and religion got the job done, you wouldn't be here. Where is love and religion the most predominant? In the poor countries, right? And how in the fuck has that worked out for them? It hasn't. Now, I'm not saying you gotta be Adolf Hitler, although Adolf Hitler was one of the most high performance guys in the last hundred years. Because you were raised thinking high performance meant goody two shoes. I like your new look. That's Brian Culey Rose, for those of you that don't recognize him. He asked me last night at dinner, why I'm, why do, he didn't say it this way. It was much more polite. Why am I stuck with a Culey? You said it nicer than that, but that was a question. Because you are the most visible person that I've trained in recent years, and they've seen a transformation from whatever you called yourself four, five, six years ago to today. Now he looks, he looks like a person. I mean, he looks like a professional, which he is. Even though he dressed that way, he was still a professional. Because as I say, you only have two times to make a first impression. One, when they see you. Now the Goomba brothers look better than they are, okay? <laughs> they look better than they are. And the second time uh, you get to make a first impression is when they open their mouth. Then you know who they are. As soon as they open their fucking mouth, except the, especially Tony, uh, then they know. He's just a, a slightly refined fucking gangster. That's it. That has been a bully all his life. I asked him at dinner in, um, when I was there for that Trump event that Mr. Trump didn't show up to, I might add. Uh, have you always been a loud mouth, blah, blah, blah? Yeah. And then I looked at his brother. Yeah, yeah, he has. And, um, but uh, the, uh, this week will be transformational, even more transformational than uh, the last seminar. Uh, that you attended. Um, a couple of you, at least one of you, this is your second hardcore. Uh, the, um, I was just reading emails in between crying, watching myself at University of Pennsylvania. God damn, I was good. The um, uh, four or five deals closed. Deals that they were trying to close by December 31 that didn't get closed. And um, a high school, or high school, excuse me, that's Freudian. A uh, college senior closed a deal, the University of Washington. Healthcare deal, uh, 1.7 million, I think. And just to remind you, if you follow the steps in pounds sterling and you do your first deal, which is a million, million and a half, the amount that accrues to your uh, account is about a million. So you're a millionaire, you do one deal. Does everybody, no, you don't remember that. Come on, doc. I mean, I, I know it doesn't have SEX in it, 
But, uh, huh? You understand SEX, though, don't you? You could be one of the preeminent experts on that. Or want to be preeminent expert, I think. When you do a deal, because you're going to have about 60, 65, 68% of, of the equity in the deal. Remember? You give away all the rest of bullshit. It's not bullshit. You give away 35%, so you're going to have roughly two-thirds. So you're going to have two-thirds of whatever would account on a balance sheet as equity. And normally, they're about a million. So you're going to have... Uh, excuse me, a million and a half. So you're gonna have about two thirds of that. So you do two deals, you're a multimillionaire. You do three deals, you're a two and a half millionaire. You do five, seven, eight deals, and that's how it works. And uh, but so these emails the kids are sending me right now for deals that they didn't get across the goal line. One of the guys says the lawyers wouldn't respond to answer their call during Christmas. That's one thing for the lawyers not to do any fucking work. But if they're not answering your goddamn calls, you're a cunt and he should fire him. As soon as the deal closes today, he should fire him. At the closing, after the sign off. By the way, don't let the door hit you in your flabby ass on the way out, asshole. You're fired. Now, see, the difference is I actually talk to professionals that way. And you could never, most of you. Tony thinks he could, but he can't. He wants to, though. It's in him. It's in his in his DNA. But he's like, well, I'll lose this contract over here. And if they hit, uh, because then you start thinking about the repercussions. So you don't. I've never been uh, bothered with... Uh, thinking about repercussions. Don't me, don't confuse me with the facts. I may be uh, uh, wrong, but I'm never in doubt. All these, you know, all the things that I say, but I believe, I actually live them. I actually live them. Um, you are gonna be split up into groups and the, uh, whoops, where the hell is my stuff? Uh, oh, there it is. Um, and each group has a team leader of sorts. Um, and each group has six or seven people in them, and you will be divided up into four different places on the state, one of which is here, one of which is in the chauffeur's cottage, one of which is in the trophy room in the, in the main castle, and one of which is in the study uh, in the main castle. And uh, the um, you're going to be given cases. The first cases that you go through are your cases that you that you turned in. Uh, everybody but one person turned in two cases. And again, some of you aren't working on cases, and so you went to the B school someplace, uh, MIT or Stanford or Harvard their library and you got cases. And then we have about five to seven permanent cases that all groups get, but you go through your cases first. And so when you when you break out in a few minutes, and then I'll go to each group and I'll go to the first group, which is here, and I'll spend however many minutes I think is uh, required. Then I'll go to each one of the, the stations and I will be at all your stations before lunch. Lunch is still one o'clock. Uh, and uh, you will go through and you will, as I said last night, you will either divide up the presentation of the case to one person. For those of you that are doing your own cases, it'll be you. And for the bigger cases, it'll be whoever needs the presentation skills the most, which just about all of you, other than Brian QLA Rose, who's a professional uh, uh, stage person now, uh, everybody else needs practice. And even even Brian needs practice, because you never have enough practice never, when you get to be a world-class speaker. Um, and then um, starting tomorrow, oh, not tomorrow, excuse me, starting this afternoon, you will start presenting the cases and you'll get up here and you'll, if you need the easel, you'll use it. If you, some of you have slides, some of you have pitch decks, whatever. Um, it's amazing how quickly I didn't realize because the last uh, hardcore, two thirds of the presentations had pitch decks, meaning slides uh, presentation. So either I don't understand how hard it is to put a pitch deck together, which I guess I don't. I don't know how easy the tools are, but I mean, they put the, uh, unbelievable. Some just did on the, uh, on the board with uh, the Crayola, or not Crayola, the marking pen. And uh, we'll go through and you make the pitch and then you'll open it up to questions and they'll either like what you say or not. Some will say not, like I would say, what the fuck are you smoking, moron? You really think that's a deal? Well, that went over like a turd in a punch bowl. Did you think that everybody was just gonna be nice to you when you got up and pitched your piece of shit? Apparently so. Why are you all looking like uh, your dog just died? And a couple of you that have great presentation skills, great. Uh, great to terrific presentation skills um, will feel right at home. Those of you that can't chew gum and talk, well, it'll be a learning experience. But by the last day that you're up here pitching, you'll be much better. And um, and then um, then tonight, um, the uh, uh, one of the reasons there's no homework because some of you will work on your cases. Because some of the, uh, the uh, cases, now the cases that each one of you brought, most of them are pretty straightforward. But the cases, the professional cases that came from the B-School, some of them are pretty, not confusing, but they have a lot of information to assimilate. Uh, and so uh, before, up till dinner, then after dinner, uh, the, uh, you can work on them. I'm not forcing you to work on them. Whereas during the regular seminar, if you didn't do homework, you got thrown out. Well, you, we'll be able to all tell who did preparation and didn't do preparation pretty easily when you get up there and uh, your thumb up your ass and you can't say anything. Uh, we had a guy last time, a great guy, 
um, but he has uh, stage fright, I think is the word. And when I mean stage fright, I mean legitimate, first class, 100% stage fright. And he would stand there in front of this thing, and then he'd see, the only thing that would change is he'd switch the, the, the then he put the pen in his hand, and then he turned to me and said, I said, don't tell me you can't do it. Now, I don't think we have anybody like that here, but you never know, you never know. Um, and you go through the presentations, and then the comments are supposed to be, um, uh, not constructive criticism, because all criticism is, uh, uh, whether you call it constructive, but how to make your deal better, how to, not your presentation so much better, but how, why you should have not even looked at this deal more than five minutes. Some of you are gonna present cases that you looked at, I'm ashamed to say, days, weeks, and I know that they weren't worth the shit in between 90 and 120 seconds. And if you remember from the regular seminar, there's only one thing that you look at. That's a motivated seller. If that seller's not motivated, fuck him. Next. If he is truly motivated, then does free cash flow cover debt service? If we don't get past that hurdle, fuck him. Her or it. Whatever they are. Okay? So, some of the deals, and I scanned all of them, and I'm very familiar with all the professional deals you're going to look at from the B-Schools. Uh, many of your deals, it doesn't... Um, doesn't compute. Unless the seller is so motivated, he's willing to take a lot of seller's finance, which we call seller's equity. Then any deal, and uh, uh, one of the keys to the guys that are getting deals so quickly done last year, and the beginning of this year is uh, you can do any deal in a matter of a few days if you seller finance, if you seller's finance. But they, the, the seller really has to be motivated. And I start, remember, shock and awe. My first offer is 100% seller finance. 100%! Some of you get 20. 15. What? Fuck you. I mean, what are you, a cunt? Yes, you are. Because you're afraid to say 100% seller finance because you know they're going to throw you out. That, like, at least that's what you think. And uh, you work your way down from 100% seller finance. But any day, any day, any deal can be done in 24 hours with seller finance. No bankers, no banking paperwork, no bankers hurdles to go over. And uh, the um, we're going to talk about Marcus Bauer, a Hall of Famer, who I, 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 I misguided or I mistold or uh, I was disingenuous. I told you bad information. He didn't do 24 deals. He only did 23. The uh, 24th deal cratered at the goal line. And we're going to share a couple horror stories where the banks fucked the kids, you, at the goal, at the close. By the way, Tony, uh, we need an extra 125 grand. We're going to show you deals, the accountants and the lawyers fucked you at the close. At the close! And these are professionals that are supposed to be representing you. We're going to show you some deals where your board fucked you at the close. Now that 10% that you were giving me as CEO is just... Uh, doesn't sound right. And they say, Tony, can I have a quiet word with you? That's how they do it here. Quiet word. They step outside and, uh, and you, uh, all you can hear is Tony smacking the guy's head against the, 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 the wall. But that doesn't get the deal done. What gets the deal done is walking away. We had uh, about 15 takeaway closes at the end of last year, meaning they walked out the door. I said, fine, you keep the deal. And you, you can go um, try to collect the fees that I owe you on a delay fee basis. Go fuck yourself. And it, all our team got up and left. They didn't get to the parking lot, but that takes balls to do that because half the time they'll say, let them go. And then you're fucked. You owe the lawyers a hundred and a half. You owe the count accountants 50 or 75 and you're living off the uh, fumes of a gas pipe because you haven't eaten in four days. Now, some of you shouldn't eat in about four months. So we're going to go through all that and refresh your memory, refresh your memory. But in spite of all that, the kids got a lot of deals done at the end of the year. In spite of all that, uh, the uh, ranting and raving and guys, I don't need any validation how good this shit is. And that it works, because I know it works. Now we're gonna uh, play a uh, testimonial that I got um, uh, by way of the DocuFuck guys.